is going to be a lesson on finding angles using trig ratios. This is a very important lesson. We apply some of what we were doing earlier, but we start using it in more specific, more complex ways. So this is a very, this is these concepts that we look at here, although some of them will seem familiar, it's very important that you try lots of them and get really, really good. You'll get exam questions like this on it, on your test, but you'll also get more complicated exam questions, but they re that uh, require the skills you pick up in this lesson. So I'm um, going to start right in on it. Here we're asked to find all values of theta in the domain zero between 0 and uh, 360 degrees. So that just means we need to get all the angle values within one full rotation. Remember, if you start going uh, wrapping around again, you're just um, duplicating yourself getting coterminal angles. Now everybody here has found angles before. It's not new, like um, sine theta is equal to 1 half or 0.5. In fact, most people are pretty good at it. They just use their second fun fu uh, function key, excuse me, on their calculator and they've got it. But things get a little bit more complicated when you're dealing with that full rotation. So I'm going to draw the little um, grid in the corner and I'm going to show you the basic method that we apply. There's three steps and the first two, the order doesn't matter, so I'll just arbitrarily do it like this. It's very important you, under, you uh, identify the quadrants you're in. And this is where that cast rule comes into play. Now sine is positive, and sine is positive in two quadrants, quadrant one and quadrant two, according to the cast rule. Sine is negative in three and four. So we know that our answer, our answers, are going to be in quadrants one and two. So this is very important. Identify those two quadrants and you will see that we expect to get two answers instead of just one that you would get on your calculator. Now the second step is we find the reference angle. That's not as complicated as it might seem. So find theta r. We use our calculator and you might recall that when you're looking for the angle you must press second function. So I go second function sine make sure you're in degree mode but you should be from the previous questions second function sine and then you can go 1 divided by 2 or you could just go 0.5 either way you'll get the same answer you should get an angle theta r is equal to 30 degrees. Now you may think of that as just being theta but in fact it is the reference angle and we to get our angles, to get our full answers we now have to take that 30 degree angle and draw it in both quadrants 1 and 2 like this. And our angle in quadrant one, our reference angle is 30, and then our reference angle in quadrant two is 30. And I wouldn't make this too complicated. I would just reason my way through it. If I have a, a reference angle of 30 degrees in quadrant one, well, the rotation angle is going to be 30 degrees, because remember, we always take it from the positive half of the x-axis. However, the s s quadrant two angle, to get the rotation angle, you would have to take it all the way from that same point. And that would mean that our angle would be 180 degrees minus 30, which is 150 degrees. So we use the reference angle to find what the rotation angle is. And of course that would depend on which quadrant you're in, whether or not you would be adding 
180, subtracting from 180, or possibly taking it from 360. But this method, this three-step method, you will use repeatedly, probably more than anything else in this unit. Let's try a few more examples. Here we get cosine theta is equal to negative 0.3746. Hmm. So it's a decimal, but that's okay. But it's also negative, and this is going to remind us to do something also very important. Same method. And I ad identify the two quadrants we're in. Because cosine is positive in 2 and negative in 2, we can come up with where this angle, this reference angle, would be located. And if you think back to the cast rule, you'll remember that they're all positive in quadrant 1, everything. And cosine is positive in quadrant 4. So that would tell us that we are negative in quadrants 2 and 3. So important to do that. Quadrants 2, quadrants 3. If you just put this whole thing in your calculator right now, you would get one of the answers. But your calculator cannot give you both of the answers. So that's why you have to st just start with the reference angle. And then your reference angle, to find it, we have to do something a little bit different. Now we would, of course, go second function cos, but you must ignore the negative. The negative served its purpose in telling us, us which quadrants we're in, but we do not enter the negative. Second cos, 0.3746, and this will give us our reference angle. So very important, do not key in the negative. So you have to train yourself to do that. So second cos point three seven four zero will give us an angle, a reference angle of sixty eight degrees. Not exactly. There is a, a decimal there, but I will take these ones to the nearest degree. Questions generally will tell you what to round to. This was a bit of an oversight in this case. I now take that. 68 degree angle, reference angle. Remember the reference angle is always off the x-axis and I draw it, you know, more or less accurately in quadrants 2 and 3. Doesn't have to be very good though because we're just using it to figure out what their full rotation angle is. And then finally to get our full rotation angle, we're in quadrant 2, so it means we have to go 180 minus 68. So that's 112 degrees. Because you are figuring out how far it is from the positive half of the x-axis to this point. So it's 180 all the way to the uh, um, other half of the x-axis. And then in quadrant four, three, excuse me, we have to go a little further. So in this case, we would be going 180 degrees plus your reference angle of 68. So that's 248 degrees. And now we have our two answers. Let's try a couple more. cotangent theta is equal to negative square root 3. So we have a radical, not a big deal, but we also have a reciprocal function, cotangent. We do not have reciprocal functions on our calculator. So I'm going to do two steps in one here. Um, first off, I wrote this cotangent as negative square root 3 over 1. Now you don't need to do that, but at least you're writing it as a fraction. 
and then we can see that tan theta would be the reciprocal of that value. So tan theta is equal to negative 1 over root 3. And now we're in business because we should be able to identify the two, the two quadrants we're in where tan is negative. So tan is positive in quadrant 1, just like they all are. It's also positive in quadrant 3. So we know we're going to be in quadrants 2 and 4. It takes a bit of practice to get good at that, but by the time you write, you finish this unit, you should be able to, with the, in about two seconds, figure out who's positive where. Then we go after our reference angle, so theta r. We have a negative, so we once again have to ignore the negative and simply go second function tan. Your bracket will open. And of course, you'll see they write it as tan negative 1. No big deal. But what you're actually keying in is second tan. Bracket opens and go 1 divided by. And make sure you key in square root 3. and then close your bracket. So your square root will open and then put a 3, close, and close the big bracket. You actually won't need to do that, but it, uh, it'll still work without it. And you should get a reference angle of 30 degrees. Your square root key, uh, you probably don't need to know this. I'm making it a little bit messy on the screen, but that's second function x squared key. I'm sure you've worked with it before. Anyways, we now can draw this in quadrant 2. And in quadrant 4. And we take our 30 degrees there. And then our 30 degrees there. So when we work out our full rotation, once again, we walk it off from the pos positive half of the x-axis. So 180 minus 30 is 150. And that's the quadrant 2 answer. And then when you go all the way around into quadrant 4, 360 minus 30, because the full rotation would be 360, subtract that 30 away, will give us 330 degrees. That's the method for reciprocals. Let's try another one. Sine squared theta is equal to 1. One thing with um, trig, when they are squaring something, they take the exponent and they tuck it in the middle. And what this really means when you see sine squared theta equal to 1 is the sine of theta all squared equal to 1. And that would be true, of course, for any exponent. To solve this one now, we have to take the square root of both sides. That's how we solve for sine theta. And remember, when you take the square root, you've got to go plus or minus. And that would give us sine theta is equal to plus or minus 1. So this is actually taking, taking us into quadrantal territory. If you recall the previous lesson, that sine theta is equal to 1 somewhere on the axis and it's equal to negative 1 somewhere else, but always right on a quadrantal. So let's see what we can do with it. There's our, our grid. Now you may be able to go directly to the answer, but I'm going to do this the conservative method. So most of you, if, if not now, very soon will decide that you want to do it much quicker than this. So I'll take sine theta is equal to 1 or sine theta is equal to negative 1, and I'll work them both down. And I'm going to play dumb with this. I'm going to do it the same way that I did the others, although I would eventually recommend that you do it quicker. Sine theta is equal to positive 1. So sine is positive in quadrants 1 and 2. Go after your reference angle. So theta r, if you go second sine, we 
1, you will get a reference angle of 90 degrees. And if you take a look at that 90 degree angle in quadrant 1 or in 2, they both take you to the same place. They take you to a quadrantal. So theta is equal to 90 degrees. So if you recognize this as a quadrantal, you don't have to go through this whole process. In fact, most of you will, as soon as you see sine theta is equal to 1, will immediately write this as 90 degrees. And then you could do the same thing for sine theta equal to negative 1, or a very similar thing. Because sine theta equal to negative 1 is going to place you, it's negative in quadrants 2 and 3, and you'll get the same reference angle. You'll get theta r is equal to 90 degrees because you went second sine 1. Once again, do not key in the negative, although you, many people will actually with quadrantals because they, you know, they, they will only get one answer so you don't have to worry so much about you know, adjusting your answer for specific quadrants. But with that 90 degree reference angle in 2 and 3 taking you to the same place, you will now end up with theta is equal to 270. And then you've got it. So that's what happened when we dealt with quadrantals. So this is a very important lesson and the next lesson after this will go in a different direction temporarily but this one is one you want to have mastery on. Thank you for your time.